Have you seen Hunter Biden's hard drive or his more recently broken cell phone, his entire iCloud account? If you haven't seen it, don't. Do not look. I saw a link going around Twitter. I clicked on it. I think I have seen more naked images of Hunter Biden than I have seen of my own body. I've seen naked uh, looking in the mirror in the bathroom. I mean, this guy, it's, I, I looked, I said, okay, is that, I see like two or three photos. I say, I've got to look away, but I do want to find out about the crimes that he has committed. And more importantly, I want to find out about any crimes potentially that go all the way up to the big guy, numero uno, Mr. Joe, to help me parse all of this and to save me from having to actually look at the laptop and the cell phone is my friend, Jack Posobiec, who's senior editor at Human Events and a TP USA host. Jack, thank you for being here. Michael, I've seen things. I've seen things that I cannot <laughs> unsee, things from the other side, things yeah. that are uh, most likely in the service of Moloch. Um, mm -hmm. This content, it, uh, this is godlessness, right? This is a this is a man who who never had God in his life. Uh, his father is supposedly this nominal Catholic, and yet we don't see any uh, embl uh, not even a sign of any Catholic or any type of religious, you know, uh, upbringing, right? In his son, right? And I, and I say this as look, you know, people struggle with addiction. Sure, I I get that, and I'm sympathetic to that. But we what we've seen on this laptop and this hard drive. I've had a copy of it for two years now. Uh, the cell phone is, it's a lot of, a lot of, it's, it's more, but it, it typically it tends to be more of along the same vein, right? Not only the licentiousness, the fornication, uh, prostitution, but also these financial wheelings and dealings that go in with Ukraine, with China, with Russia in many cases. And, you know, just to say as a prior Intel guy, when I was in the Navy, if I were working for the Chinese MSS or the Russian FSB, and I was looking for, I don't know, potentially a way to influence, you know, American politics. And I was looking for perhaps a, a node into one of the major political families in the in the country. Right. This would be the guy. This would easily be the number one guy that you would go after. You'd, you could set up all sorts of blackmail operations, honeypot operations on this guy. And it would tie directly back to the father because, of course, the financial uh, the financial ties are all there. And so the issue is it isn't so much about, you know, is um, the the first son being being blackmailed. We, we know we know that he has the financial ties there. We know that he's been with X amount of uh, foreign escorts, shall we say, if we're going to be nice about it. Um, the real question is, why isn't it at this point? And I'm, I'm basically at this point, Michael. Why hasn't there been an acknowledgement of this grand jury that's opened in supposedly in Delaware under the U.S. attorney that we're told was supposed to be a, a tax, right? They said it was a tax investigation. That's what Hunter tried to say right after the election. It's very quiet, right? Because everyone's talking about, you know, is Trump, is there going to be a recount, et cetera. But very quietly, Hunter Biden came out and said, well, I'm under tax investigation. No, no, no. He's actually under federal investigation for his foreign financial wheelings and dealings. That's number one. But number two, this is a guy who's been in the White House as recently as this week. He was at the U.S. Uh, the, the Medal of Freedom ceremony, and he's talking to Senator Lieberman, he's talking to Cindy McCain, right? And he's right there front row, right? Do we know that he has, how does he able to get so close to the president? What is his level of communication with the president when we know there's clearly issues here? And by the way, right, and I don't want to go full Russiagate on this thing and say, oh, there's a dossier and, you know, everything else. But you'd, you'd like to know, hopefully, that the highest office in our land is protected by a layer of people that are being a little bit proactive into someone who's clearly a target for foreign intelligence operations. Well, I don't think you have to worry about going Russiagate. We were told with Russiagate that there were photos and videos of Donald Trump doing all sorts of things with hookers in foreign hotel rooms. I, I don't need to wonder if that's the case with Hunter Biden. We've all seen the videos. We've, we've really all amazing, seen the photos. <laughs> right. It's, it's, we were, it's, it's, he is everything that the media told us that Donald Trump Jr. and Donald Trump Sr. were, right? He is all of those things, to, to a T, every single one of them. And there's no question about it. And my favorite part of this, actually, and I tweeted this yesterday, was that I love how the left, they hate the rich, right? D down with the rich, eat the rich, AOC's got the dress on and everything. I hate the rich, I can't stand the rich, unless your name is Hunter Biden, in which case, you know, go do what you want. Right, right. No, so 
This raises a few different questions. One, I don't really care about Hunter Biden's personal life. This is actually why I was able to, to convince myself that I don't need to look at these videos and photos. Is one, I thought, it's not good for my soul to see these things. And yeah. two, I'm not sure that there's much of a purpose being served here because, look, it's just Hunter, it's this degenerate son. But then you raise this point. You say, this is a real blackmail risk. This is a real extortion risk. Uh, this is a guy who has been committing crimes on camera. It's not just that he's getting a little frisky with his wife and puts, a, puts his laptop open. He's, the guy's committing crimes on camera. And the, the crimes are almost inseparable from the financial crimes. The weird sex stuff is taking place within the context of this broader foreign That's corruption. Right. Where is he getting the money for these shenanigans? Well, he's getting it from overseas powers. He's getting it from Ukraine. He's getting it from China. Right, this is the enabling that we see. Right. And so, so I guess my question for people who aren't going to go through seven zillion terabytes of Hunter Biden's gross Please hard don't. drives. Yeah. And no, no one recommends that. What what are the big crimes here? What should we be worried about? What is the connection to Joe Biden if one does exist? What, what is the issue? I, I just don't want people to, to get buried in an avalanche of tabloid stuff and then miss the actual crimes. Right. So the actual crimes in this situation, and it does go back to some of the things that we've known for years. And some of this was originally reported uh, by places like Politico, by the New York Times and others. Um, this idea that he was getting fifty thousand dollars a month from it from Burisma, right? It's a name that you suddenly don't hear anymore, uh, which is this Ukrainian oil company controlled by Ukrainian oligarchs. While his father was the vice president, we also know again that he's tied in in China with this group called uh, BHR Investments, and they are heavily invested in Sinopec. Sinopec is the CCP's, uh, that's, their, that's their gas company, right? That's their, that's their state-owned gas enterprise. He's invested in it. That's the, same gas com- that's the same company that President Biden is selling our oil to from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. So you really do have to put all this together and say, why is it that the financial dealings of Hunter Biden, who is a guy that doesn't look like anybody, anyone that anyone would want to ever do business with, right? What possible expertise could he be offering the Ukrainian oligarchs, the oligarchs of the CCP, the heads, the apparatchiks of, of the Politburo, right? Other than access to his father and access to politics, right? If this is the stuff, and come on, it, you know, you know, he's not hiding this. Everyone in his family knows what he's doing. His father clearly knows what he's doing. We can see the text messages. His wife, his ex-wife knew what he was doing. His uh, at one point in some of the videos and in the text messages, you can see he was um, carrying on a relationship with his uh, the widow of his brother. So his brother's widow uh, carrying on a relationship, which included drugs while children were in the home. Right. We could that's that's all child endangerment, by the way, in the, in the state of Delaware. Last time I checked and I believe in all 50 states, as a matter of fact, even California. Yes, I believe they do have some, you know, obscure 1800s law still in the book about that. You know, they haven't uh, haven't gotten rid of all <laughs> haven't of haven't enforced yet. in a while. Right? Newsom will probably hear this and, and then take action. Right. Swift action. But the the issue then becomes obviously he's selling influence with his father. And so when you can dig back to those emails, you can see this, that the Ukrainian oligarchs would go to Biden. And this is during the vice presidency, because, again, people need to understand the timeline of this laptop, right? This laptop gets left in 2020. So it's really, I think, 2019 or so is the cutoff of any information that we have. So it's after Biden has left the White House, but it goes back prior to that, but before Biden has become president. So the real question is, what emails and text messages and business are going in and out of, with the Hunter Biden crime syndicate now? So we, we have all of th- this evidence, and I think you make a very persuasive case. The evidence that Joe is involved is that Hunter Biden is being hired at all because Hunter Biden is a completely useless degenerate. <laughs> and so the only reason that the Ukrainians or the Chinese or the Russians or whoever would hire him is to get access to his father. Is there a smoking gun con- making that connection, which is the most important connection, between Hunter and these shady business dealings and Joe himself? I know there are connections to Jim Biden, to his uncle, to Joe's brother. I know there are connections to the rest of the Biden family. But do- can conservatives say, we've got Joe himself on these issues? 
Well, there's two. There's a few pieces there, right? Um, probably the biggest ones that I would say in terms of that are we know that for a fact there is a video of Hunter Biden essentially because he films himself constantly. But in one of his, I guess, binges, he's filming a video which he's talking to one of his his ladies and he's telling her, I'm the one who makes all the money for the family. Mm. I'm the one that's bringing it all in. I make the money and they get to go out and they get to go have the parties and the state receptions and they don't give me the respect I deserve for being the one who brings in the money. So people need to look at this as it's not a business deal, it's a family Mm. operation. Then you see emails multiple times from none other than, I'll say it, Dr. Jill Biden, Dr. Taco, who is coming in there and she directs Hunter, she says, this bill needs to get paid. This needs to get taken care of. We had renovations done at the house in Rehoboth. Mm. Um, uh, Dad Mm. needs training wheels put on the bike. No, I just made that one up. but you can see her direct um, visa debit cards, right? You know, those prepaid debit cards that people will send out. She says, you know, send a debit card here, send a debit card mm. there. There's an, under, there's an underlying understanding that the money isn't necessarily Hunter's money, mm. that it's the family money. Wow, that's, that's a really important connection there because when Hunter gets that, that message from Jill, you know, hola Hunter, como estas, estas bien, mm-hmm. bueno, bueno, mm-hmm. Uh, send me el, el dinero, por favor. Uh, that is, it. well, you, you saw it referred to elsewhere in the Hunter Biden laptop when he said 10% goes to the big guy, right? Or right, you, of course, that's the quintessential one that we've seen as 10% for the big guy. But but I do think there's another there's another family layer to this that it's it's um you know it's 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 not a quantifiable okay this you know this this money is being directed directly to Joe Biden or something like that. But it is an understanding that the money that's brought in is directable by other members of the family. Mm. And being that that is the case, how do, the, how do you then, as the President of the United States, separate that out and say, I have nothing to do with this, that's totally separate, this is a separate affair, when you, your wife, other members of the family, the money's being spread around in a way that certainly seems, from what we can see, to be tied to members of the family. Well, and we know that Joe has lied about this. We know Joe has gone on the record and said, I have never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. Hunter himself contradicted that during an interview during the 2020 campaign. He's on the plane. He, that's right. He's on the plane. I mean, come on. But now, but now we have the voicemail. Now we have a voicemail from Joe Biden talking about Hunter's business dealings. So we know for a fact Joe was lying about this. I guess the next question is what else is he lying about? Then my question for you, Mr. Posobiec, the hell are we supposed to do about it? We conservatives, we can look through the files, you know, if we can gird our loins, we look through the files. You can relate all of this information. The people can be totally informed, but how are we going to do anything about it? And what is it that we would do anyway? Well, look, conservatives need to, I I think, take a lesson out of the playbook that's been run against them for the last couple of years, the last six years or so, right? That lesson is it's action that puts points on the board. Roe v. Wade was not overturned because people were quiet about it. People went out for the March for Life. They got judges appointed, right? Same deal. Look at what the left put conservatives through all these years. Russiagate, uh, the Kavanaugh debacle, the list goes on and on and on, right? We're seeing the Jan 6 committee, the show trial of Steve Bannon, which is going to take place on Monday because he refused to take part in the other uh, witch hunt that was going on under Pelosi, right? Look, congressional investigation, right? On, add it to the list of congressional investigations. I think Twitter should be on there. Uh, I think a number of things should be on there. But clearly, clearly, Hunter Biden and his business dealings do. I know America we almost feel like we're scandaled out, right? You know, it's like we're scandal weary at this point. And so we've gotten to the point where, because the media has uh, been the boy who cried wolf so many times with these things over fake scandals, that it's almost like we forget that, hey, wait a minute, this is an actual scandal. These are actually impeachable. If if the president of the United States sent a million dollars worth, or excuse me, a million barrels of our strategic petroleum reserve to the CCP, while his son stands to financially gain from that deal. I mean, that's a direct, actual, impeachable offense. Now, again, we we don't know that for sure, but we're not going to know unless we actually take uh, this hard drive, which is something that, you know, you might see in one of those detective shows or Law & Order, SVU, something called probable cause 
or a clue, if you will, uh, if you want to go back to the Hardy Boys, right? There's a big clue that something might be happening, and it requires serious investigation. At this point, I don't trust the FBI or the CIA, quite frankly, to investigate anything with anybody that's got a D next to their name and absolutely not one of the anointed families of the elite in this country, of which the Bidens clearly are one. Mm. So we need a serious investigation into this period. What financial dealings are there? What foreign ties are there? What intelligence entities are there? Actually look at, and keep in mind, Michael, the FBI's had this thing since the very start. That's who McIsaac, Mm -hmm. Johnny McIsaac, the, the, uh, the owner of the laptop store, the repair shop, that's the first place he sent it. He didn't want to put it through the media and bring it to, you know, this whole chain of like Giuliani, Bannon, certainly not Jack Vasovic, right? He said, he, I'm, a, I'm a patriotic American. I want to do the right thing. I want to send it to the FBI and I want them to look at They sat on it. It's been on a shelf and we've seen no action whatsoever. Hmm, of course. Conservatives yeah. need to wake up, demand an actual congressional inquiry into this. So then this raises the political question for us. Uh, very likely, uh, we wouldn't be able to get Joe Biden impeached. We, I don't think we'd be able to convict him, throw him out of office. I'm not sure he's going to last long enough. I'm not sure his term is going to last long enough. And I don't know that Joe personally is going to last long enough. So maybe if the conservatives retake the House, then it's certainly worth investigating all of this, might be worth impeaching the guy. But then when we are looking ahead to our proactive uh, political agenda, 2022, 2024, who are the kinds of people that the conservatives should be pushing? Uh, you've, you have uh, become probably more influential in promoting candidates than most people on cable news in recent uh, months. So who should we be looking at and what sort of campaign should we be looking to, to bring across the finish line, both this year and in 2024? Well, absolutely. I, I thank you for, for, for the compliment. And, um, you know, look, I, I, I've said in no, no uncertain terms in my home state of Pennsylvania, I'm not a huge fan of, of Dr. Oz. I think that's, that's a flash in the pan kind of thing. He's recently said that he'll be spending his summer in his mansion in New Jersey rather than actually, you know, campaigning in the state for which he's trying to become a senator. Um, but I do think that across the country that, that we do see politicians that are, are kind of this new breed. Um, I look at like a, uh, a J.D. Vance. I look at a Blake Masters who are coming out there that are absolutely this this new lifeblood into the country, into the party and into the movement where they're coming from this idea that really started with Trump and that, that it's pragmatism that matters. It's putting results on the board. It's actually having uh, having those results and then definable, tangible results. I go back to the Roe v. Wade, right? We had so many, we had candidates for years and years and presidents for years. We had Reagan in office. We had Bush in office. For eight years, George W. Bush refused to actually attend the March for Life. Mm. And then along comes mm. Donald J. Trump, not exactly the most, um, shall we say, biblical, uh, Christian, you know, kind of guy. But he looks at it as a political transaction and says, if this is what you want, then sure, we can do that and we'll make it happen. And of mm. course, I'll come speak at the rally, right? Because it's it's shifting politics away from this, this sort of like parlor game of uh, which ideology is the best ideology and actually delivering on the promises that we said we want to deliver. I look at Masters and I see a guy like that. I look at Vance and I see a guy like that. There's a lot of candidates out there across the country that I think are now kind of getting on board with this type of messaging. But you do still see, see some people out there that are saying, oh, you know, we're got to send another 60 billion to Ukraine. And, you know, I think it's I just saw another 1.7 is going over. And you say, and you say OK, but what, what do we get out of that? Right? Right. What do the American people actually receive for sending? You know, it's, it's bigger than the GDP of like um, most states. Right. So what, what do we actually receive from that while our gas prices are five dollars a gallon across the country on the 4th of July? So turning our politics into something that's pragmatic, not necessarily. So, and by the way, I'm not saying I just got back from Ukraine. Right. So I'm not saying that, you know, don't support Ukraine, but explain it to us. Right. Explain it to us and give us a concrete reason and a concrete definition on what exactly the goal is and what the um, what the result is and how it benefits the American people. So then looking ahead, beyond these, you mentioned Masters, you mentioned Oz, you mentioned Vance. Those are all 2022 races. I know it's early. What are your thoughts on 2024? Well, I think when I look at the numbers, the math is pretty clear that um, uh, even though Trump is down a little bit from where he was in terms of the Republican electorate, he still has a commanding lead 40 points up 
um, in pretty much every poll that he's done so far. We're going to run a straw poll up at the TPOSA event next week uh, between Trump and DeSantis in Florida. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I think I, I mean, I just look at the numbers and DeSantis is great governor, lo- like absolutely love the guy. Um, but his name ID isn't high really outside of Florida and certainly with other than, you know, the high information, you know, the listeners of the Michael Knowles show, Naturally. of course, know about him very well. But for, you know, for, you know, everybody else out there, there's, yeah. they still haven't quite gotten, gotten, you know, he's not quite on the radar yet. And so it does to me look like Trump wins the primary. And given where we are in the country, I, I, I think it would be very hard for a Democrat to go up against him and campaign on the record of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and try to win. So you could see a situation here, um, just looking at it with my analyst hat on, where Trump wins because of the same reasons he won in 2016. I, I like how you put that, too. You say a Democrat running in 2024 on the legacy of Joe Biden. As if you're saying, it, it's not Joe Biden. I'm not even talking about Joe Biden. I'm just saying whoever the nominee who isn't Joe Biden is going to be. I think there's only three people that think Biden is going to run again. That's Biden himself, Jill Biden, and Ron Klain, who's effectively running the White House, the <laughs> chief of staff. Right. Keep in mind, by the way, if, if you notice, and I do a lot of reporting on sort of the palace intrigue in the White House, we call it the shade war. We do the shade war updates on Human Events Daily. And the idea is that why hasn't the chief of staff of the White House been fired at this point? Right? Any other administration, yeah. you would have seen the chief of staff. You would have been on like their third chief of staff by now. Right. The fact that Ron Klain is clinging on and has a commanding authority in the White House is because simply that he is the one who's making the decisions. He's been with the Biden family for a long time, back to the Senate days, right? He's been around forever. Blinken's beer. Blinken's been around Biden so long. Blinken, remember, he's the guy who came up with, do you remember the tripart partition plan for Iraq? We're gonna, yeah. this part for the Kurds, this part for the Sunni, that was Blinken all the way, I think it was mm. 2005. He came with that and just got laughed out of the Senate, right? It also goes by the way to show our hubris that, that we could just decide yeah. where the lines in the borders of Iraq would be, that, you know, the people of the land, I mean, who cares Wasn't about- that, that was sort of the problem in the, in the first place, wasn't it? You know, after right. the exactly. empire was dissolved. Right. Yeah, that goes Sykes Pinko, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's right. kind of the issue. So We're picking up where the British left off. So you're saying uh, Biden might think he's running, but it's not looking great for him. Uh, do you have a pick on who the nominee is going to be? You know, I think it comes down to, so there's, there's really three front runners right now. Um, the two big names are Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom. The problem is Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom are going to be competing over the same pot of money, being the Silicon Valley, multi, uh, just multi-billionaires, mega-billionaires in, uh, in California. And right now they're looking more to Newsom than they are to Kamala because they think that she's got dwindling prospects. She's most likely going to run. I've heard she's gearing up for it, that she's looking at, at this as, you know, well, I'm, I'm here. What else am I going to do? Yeah. Might as well just run. And uh, But the, I think everybody kind of knows, and the secret's way out of the bag on this one, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton mm. is absolutely looking at a potential rematch. Uh, she thinks that, um, you know, this was hers, right? I am the first female president. Uh, I was the one it was supposed to be. That was mine. Gosh darn it. I mean, this is a family show, so I'm not going to go there. Thank but, you. you know, this, um, you know, this is something that she feels that she really can w- run and win. And I think if there's a rematch, I, I just, I think she gets blown out of the water. I really, really hope it's a rematch. I, I, I love when conservatives win high office. Maybe even more than that, I love when Hillary Clinton loses. I ju- it's just so... There's something m- just, just kind of sweet about it. Yeah. Something just there it's is. delectable. It really it's is. really actually satisfying. You know, the things of this world, vanity, vanity, it's all vanity. There's something a little more satisfying when it's Hillary Clinton losing. I hope we get to see it again. Jack... Thank you, sir. Always great to speak with you. And thank you for doing your patriotic duty and delving through the absolutely satanic <laughs> sewer of, yeah. of Hunter Biden's uh, online materials so that you can report back on the crimes that the media are trying to cover up. God bless to you and your growing family. Thank you, sir. See you next time.